Today, I'm going to attempt to dispel some misconceptions about what exactly an F number is when it comes to lens speed and show you what it's actually measuring. Let's get undone. Gerald He's crazy. What is happening, everybody? I'm Gerald Undone, and today we're talking about F stops. Now, I decided to make this video for two reasons. One, because every single day I see a source from what should be an authority on photography get this equation wrong. And two, I know from the previous videos I made like this that you guys seem to like learning about how things really work. So let's quickly run through the evolution of aperture knowledge that most photographers experience. Usually it starts with you wanting to know more about how the elements of exposure works and also wondering why some lenses are better than others and you keep hearing this information on f-stops and f-numbers. Then you find out that the smaller the f-number, the more light that the lens lets in, which gives you more latitude with your exposure settings and also gives you better focusing results. Side note there on another misconception, although faster lenses do often focus faster, that's not why they're called faster lenses. They're called fast lenses because they let more light in, which allows you to set a faster shutter speed. Anyway, this is where a lot of photographers stop when it comes to learning about aperture. They know what they need to know in order to make gear decisions and to nail their exposure, and that's enough. They also might know at this point that these settings also affect their depth of field, but I'm gonna make a video on depth of field later on, so we're not gonna talk about it much in this video. Now, for those of you that are like me, this probably wasn't enough information and you wanted to know more, so you probably looked into why is it that the light increases when the F number decreases or gets smaller, or what is the actual formula for this? And this is where a lot of sources will lead you to an answer that although is functionally useful, is technically incorrect. You'll usually hear that the F in the F number is for focal length, and you divide that by the second number to get the physical diameter of your aperture. They'll usually provide you with an example like a 50 millimeter lens with an F stop of two will have an aperture diameter of 25 millimeters. But if you close down the aperture to F4, then the diameter will be 12.5 millimeters, which is why it's darker because less light is getting in the smaller hole of 12.5 millimeters versus 25 millimeters. Now, like I said, this is functionally useful when it comes to figuring out equivalencies between lenses or compensating for exposure, but technically it's not correct. So let's tear that explanation apart and give you the real info. So first of all, an aperture doesn't open or close. And by that, I mean an aperture is not a physical or mechanical device. Everyone always addresses it like that, but the aperture is just a hole. It's the opening that the light travels through. Now you can make it bigger or smaller, but the hole doesn't actually do anything. It's just air. What actually does the work here is the diaphragm. That's that multi-bladed iris that opens and closes to create a larger and smaller opening or aperture. It's just like your eye. Your pupil is the aperture and your iris is what closes down and makes the pupil smaller when you shine a bright light in there. And I know this is a bit nitpicky, but hey, that's what this whole video is about. All right, next up. The entire designation when written out is not the F number. Only the number that follows the divide sign is the F number. And that's like 1.4, 2.8, 5.6. That number is the F number. And it can also be expressed by the letter N. And the F is for focal length. So the entire formula for figuring out the F number, N, is N equals F for focal length, over D, which is the diameter of the entrance pupil. Now you'll notice I didn't say diameter of the aperture because f-stop is not a measurement of aperture, it's a measurement of the entrance pupil. And although these numbers can be similar in some lenses, they can be very different in others. And the same goes for the relative aperture that's commonly written on lenses. When it says something like one to 2.8, what that means is for every one millimeter of entrance pupil, there's 2.8 millimeters of focal length. Now the entrance pupil is an easy concept, and again, it's just like your eye. In order to see it, all you have to do is look down the front of the lens like this, and take the lens caps off and make sure there's enough light passing through, and you'll be able to see the aperture down inside. And if the diaphragm is closed enough, you'll probably see the blades of the iris as well. Now this image of the aperture as seen through the front of the lens, is the entrance pupil. And if you turn it around and look through the other side, you're gonna be looking at the exit pupil when you're looking through the back of the lens. And you might notice that they're not the same size even though the aperture hasn't changed. Now it's difficult to measure because of the front element and because it's more of an image being displayed to you than it is like a flat object in your hand that you can really measure. But if you held up a ruler and you tried to line it up, that measurement of the aperture as you see it would be the D in our formula from before, the diameter of the entrance pupil. So it's not technically the aperture because the aperture deeper down in the lens can be a different size completely. Now with a lens like this that's not too big, often the sizes are very similar and a lot of this might be academic. But the formula really starts to fall apart the way that the other sources teach it when you talk about big super telephoto lenses. If you imagine a lens that's 300 or 400 millimeters at f2.8 and you use that incorrect formula that suggests that it's the diameter of the aperture, that would mean that a 400 millimeter lens at 2 
2.8 would have an aperture of 143 millimeters. That's 14.3 centimeters or 5.6 inches. And then you have to ask, how the hell can you fit a 5.6 inch hole at the back of my lens? It's bigger than my freaking camera. And that's exactly right. And it makes no sense. And this is why it led people to believe that maybe that formula was for figuring out the size of the front element. Because on those big super telephoto lenses, the front elements are usually quite big. So you'd think, ah, that must be what it's measuring. But that's also not true because usually the front element is up to 10% bigger than the entrance pupil. So really all it is, is the size of the aperture, which will still be quite big on a 400 millimeter 2.8, but magnified because you're looking through all that glass when you look down the front of the lens, and then you can see a truly 143 millimeter aperture, but it's as it's displayed to you through the telephoto lens. And this can easily be seen with a zoom lens. If you have a 24 to 70 or 70 to 200 millimeter lens with a constant aperture of say f2.8 or f4, and you turn the zoom ring on the lens, you're gonna see the entrance pupil when you look through the front of the lens get bigger and smaller as you zoom in and out. Even though the aperture remains the same size because it's a constant aperture and it's been mechanically set by the diaphragm, so it's just the magnification of the aperture that's changing when you look down the lens and zoom in and out. So why is this important? Well, it's because the size of that entrance pupil is what determines how much light is gonna be gathered at that focal length and aperture combination. And so at this point you might be wondering, well then shouldn't a 200 millimeter at f2.8 be brighter than a 70 millimeter at 2.8 if the pupil is bigger? And you're right, it actually is. But the reason why it doesn't appear any brighter in your image or on the back of the LCD screen is because the cone of targeted light decreases when the focal length increases. Just imagine them like triangles, and the area within the triangles is the light. A more narrow triangle will have less area than a wider triangle if the reach is the same. So in order to compensate for that, the pupil needs to be bigger to let in an equivalent amount of additional light. The other reason why understanding entrance pupil is so important is because of the huge role that it plays in depth of field. Because despite what you've been told, focal length doesn't affect depth of field the way that you might think it does. But we're gonna get into that in the next video. And so for now, that's gonna be it for me, but I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. All right. I'm done.